Now, I'm not going to make any promises, but hopefully <laughs> this is going to be like the last time we talk about this movie because this movie is almost out and we can almost just wrap up talking about it. You know, maybe if there's something that comes up about the the actual ticket sales or if the movie does well, I'm sure that we'll, we may talk about that. But this is probably going to be one of the last times that we actually address the new Ghostbusters film. So a um, Los Angeles Times interview with the original or the director of the original films, uh, Ghostbusters 1 and 2, um, Ivan Reitman, I believe is his name. Um, he's basically quoted in this interview as being saying with this movie, you know, wait and see before you come to your conclusions. Basically everything that we've been told about or told by with people involved in the film, uh, you know, Oh, just wait and see. Don't judge it on the trailer. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so here's what he had to say. Many of the people writing furiously about the new Ghostbusters were at an age, maybe seven or eight or nine, when Ghostbusters was the coolest thing they ever experienced. And now there's this two minute trailer and how can that stand up to it? It's not so much that the trailer was bad. The trailer was fine. It just can't stand up to more than 25 years of personal experience. Um, and I think he goes on to say a few other things. Um, in, re in regards to the cast, um, he says, I'm confident when you see them interacting with each other and you think of what Bill Murray and Harold Ramis and Sigourney Weaver and Dan Aykroyd did in those two movies, audiences will respond in the same way. Um, he was asked about the, you know, all female cast. He said, all he said with that is we live in a different uh, era than the early 1980s, one of broadened intelligence. Because that has anything to do with who, which gender you pick to plug roles with. <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, he says he didn't realize how vicious it could be from the the blowback of the casting decision, which again I don't I don't think this is having to do a whole lot with the cast of the movie as it does with the trailers and the general quality of the movie. Um, but apparently, also in this article, um, Tom Rothman, who oversees Sony's Pictures movie business, said that the online bashing is the greatest thing that ever happened. Um, and he's quoted as saying, can we please get some more haters to say stupid things? Um, so what I'd like to start out this section is kind of give you the floor and just ask you, do you agree with that? Do you think that the dislike i won't say hate because i i'm not seeing the hate for this movie i'm seeing a very a lot of just unimpressed people a lot of people who think that you know this movie is just going to be a cash in um a lot of disappointment i'm not seeing hate but that being said do you think that the negative feedback has actually helped the movie in a way that it wouldn't have been helped otherwise um, I don't know if it helped it more than it would have in a positive way. I think it still helps. It still gives them publicity. It still gave them views on that video, which that gives them more money. Like the YouTube videos for that, uh, the YouTube views for that trailer, like that's all money that goes to them. So right now, because of how many people have looked at that video and how many people have disliked and like talked about it, like, they're, I can imagine they've already gotten some money just from that, and just all the public. Like you can say it's bad publicity, and like people like ranting about how it's not the same as it was. It's still publicity, and it's still getting the movie around, and it's still getting people talking about it. It's getting some people active about you know saying nothing but good things, and like giving it a, a very positive look, and pe saying that people need to go look at it in a positive manner, and like. This is a new movie. This has no ties to the old one. This is a fresh start. So, in that sense, then yeah, like I could see that the negative popularity of this is still good for it because uh, I don't know if you knew this. I want to say Grand Theft Auto 4 or Grand Theft Auto 5. I think it was 4. Um, 
there was a lot of bad publicity for that game. Um, and there was a lawyer who is pretty famous in the Grand Theft Auto world and also the Rockstar. Um, he pretty much tried to get the whole game just canceled. And in doing so, it ended up giving Rockstar and Grand Theft Auto 4 a lot of popularity. And like a lot of people started looking at it. And I think it even like upped their sales at one point. And kind of like to give like an homage to him, there's a character in the game who's literally exactly like him. And there's like a mission to like, okay, I don't agree with this. And I think it's a little childish, but I think it's a mission to kill him because he's like, he's trying to get video games banned because they're violent. Like little kids shouldn't be playing them, which was kind of like what the stance he was taking because there was like a lot of things that Grand Theft Auto does that, you know, people under the age of like, like 16 shouldn't be playing. Right. And, you know, his argument was fair, but in the video game world, no one cares. You know, if they're a fan of that franchise, they're going to want to play that game. And someone saying that they can't just because of how old they are, that's going to make them want to play it even more. And that's going to, like, that ended up being really good for uh, Rockstar. Mm-hmm. And all that publicity and all that just talk about was really good for them and the sales of the game. So, for all I know, it could be the exact same for this. Maybe not in the exact same way, but I can definitely see how all this, all the dislikes and all the the people ranting about it, I can see how it's still good for them, because it's still being talked about. I don't see it that way at all. <laughs> I, I do think with Grand Theft Auto, the it had a different draw to it. Um, I think with that, it's it's like you said, like, oh, I shouldn't be playing this game. That makes me want to play it all the more. It's the reverse psychology thing. Um, what, I'm, what I'm seeing from YouTubers who do movie reviews, the one like James Rolfe, who kind of added fuel to the fire, if you want to say, you know, coming out saying that he wasn't going to see the movie and he gave very clear reasons why none of them were based on sexism um i'm seeing a lot of people dislike the trailer say why they dislike the trailer and then just say you know i don't even hate the movie i just have zero interest it hasn't sold me on seeing it like a trailer should because that's the whole point of a trailer um, and we actually, I found another article, um, I want to say it was posted today on IGN, but it's basically uh, Paul Fage, the director, telling IGN in London about how everything happened with the trailer and how he was happy with it and how all the, even though it had, it's the most disliked trailer of any movie in YouTube history, there were still plenty of likes to it, and the number of likes that it also received matched what other good movies got for their trailers. So he was kind of looking at it from a glass half full perspective, which which is fine. Um, I don't really have any respect for him at this point, just based on even though he apologized, saying like you know I shouldn't have called everyone obscenities in the and the, the geek community or geek culture. Um, but you know what? Once you say something, you can take it back. I'm sorry. That's just, that's just not how that works. We know what his true, what he truly thinks about geek culture. And, you know, for someone who's making a movie that's going to appeal to geek culture, maybe he shouldn't have done it in the first place. Um, his quote goes, they quote him a lot. Like, uh, Hopefully I'll have a link in the description for it, but um, he talks a lot about how he's overall okay with the trailer. He's not ashamed of it. Um, this first trailer that, that did come out, the one that everyone disliked. And to me, a trailer needs to sell your movie. Even with with you know, an installed fan base like Ghostbusters. Um, and even with the director of the original c- coming out and saying, you know, oh, well, you know, I don't I don't see a, you know, you really need to see it for yourself. Again, I feel like 
anyone who was involved in the first movie is not going to come out until this movie has been released and it's out of theaters. I don't. I think they're going to wait till then to say like. I think there's a good chance we're going to learn about all the stuff that was going on behind the scenes. Like apparently, um, I haven't been able to substantiate any of this, but the cast have been get not getting along with each other. Uh, the four four lead characters, they like. There's been a lot of uh, in studio bickering about. Well, how come I don't have as many funny lines as she does? That kind of thing. <laughs> and I'm not saying that that's true because I don't know. These are just things I've heard other people who have discussed this movie have stated that they've heard. So I'm hearing this second, possibly even third hand information here. Um, this, I don't think it's going to help it. I think it's actually going to do, you know, it's <laughs> the critically, I don't think it's going to affect the movie one way or another. You know, as a movie critic, you're supposed to be able to remove yourself from any hype or lack of hype of a movie. You're just supposed to judge it based on when you see it. You're not even supposed to, based on it, judge judging it with the trailers being considered. You're just supposed to go sit down, watch a movie, judge it on its own merits. With this, though, um, and I, I don't think critically it's going to be... I don't think critically. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to do critically. I know that whether it's it does critically well or not, I do think that they have they've hurt their sales by almost embracing and trying to gin up this um, this whole like oh you know bunch of basement dwellers who live with their mom still and you know what do they know they just hate women. And they couldn't get a date with one anyone. That whole stereotype of the of the gamer slash fan of 80s stuff. It's it's played out. It's not. It's I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say it's it's not true. It's not as it's you know it's a stereotype that's not as true as everyone wants to believe. Like hey, I'm. In my 30s, I'm happily married. I don't live in my mom's basement. I am gainfully employed. I'm doing fine. And I'm a geek. I'm a nerd. I'm okay with that. And I don't fit into these, like, you know, you know, women-hating people that they are saying are completely driving this online movement of, you know, of hate. And I... And, and, Hate is a very strong word to use. I, I honestly think I don't. I haven't heard anyone say I hate this movie or I hate this trailer. It's all a bunch of just dislike, and you can dislike something without you can disagree with something without hating it. So, did you have anything else to add before we move on? No. Anyway, we're not telling anyone not to go see this movie. If you want to go see it on its own merits, fine. Um, I have no interest in it. Matt, do you have any interest in it? It's probably a good chance that my sister or mom would want to go see this movie, and they'll probably want to be like, hey, let's go do a family thing. And they'll be like, all right, sure, why not? So you're going to get dragged to it whether you want to or not. There's a very good possibility, especially with uh, when does this come out? Um, I know this month. Um, I was going to say maybe college can save me, but... <laughs> no luck there. 